So for this game, we are playing as the Skaven against Beastmen. Uh, once again, I'm going to take the day to try and learn Skaven. And uh, now we're trying some experimental builds. In this case, we are opting for a sort of kite style, which is probably a bad idea on a map this small. Uh, so that is a uh, yeah, that is just a mistake that you can sometimes make if you forget to check the map that you're playing on. But uh, it is pretty uncommon, so I'm hoping uh, we're able to catch the beastmen off guard. They have mostly infantry. We could do okay. Um, so fingers crossed for that. Our army is ready, so we can, uh, well, I guess, I guess we might as well go into our army. We have a bunch of skirmishers over here. Some, uh, some wolf rats to run around and, and kite. Uh, so in case anything dives in. Oh, wait, uh, my Discord bot is being weird. Alright, so my Discord bot's acting a bit weird. Check that out after this game. Uh huh, not listed it. Alright, oh man, that's distracting. I forgot how bad it was having to to work with that Discord bot. Uh let's see. I think I'll also have to turn down my graphics a little bit. Feels like the uh Feels like my my camera movement, like my frame rate, is a little bit strange. Uh, but yeah, we'll we'll play around with uh with some settings, in just a bit. Opponent is taking a while, so I think it's about time we ready up, and just in time as they do indeed finish. So uh, with the wolf rats, we're going to begin by uh charging them in. And uh, they can get pretty good cycle charging in on this Beastman infantry here. No problem. The our gutter runners will uh, begin kiting. And uh, wow, we've already routed off some of these guys. Uh, Minotaurs with great weapons are charging in on Thwa. Um, But uh, let's see how well he does. He has his Rat Ogre summon. And uh, I think a Death Frenzy is in order. I'm going to throw that down over here and then hopefully our wolf rats will be able to kill these ogres but I'm not sure exactly how well that will go. Uh, they, or not the ogres, the minotaurs. Um, they do some pretty good damage. We can even give them anti-large. Um, but is that enough? Uh, they actually bring the minotaurs down pretty low. Uh, the beastmen are routing in droves. And, uh, and so far, I'm liking where this is going. Our Brood Horror takes uh, a little bit of damage. So we will have to pull that back. And then uh, let's try uh, killing these dogs over here. We don't want them catching my, uh, my skirmishing forces here. Continue to run back. Uh, let's throw down some Warp Lightning. And... Uh, we don't really want to engage. Uh, this is because there are a whole bunch of chaos spawn there, and uh, and yeah, in fact, uh, that's that's all the uses of chaos spawn coming in from uh, oh, what's it from our beastman opponent here, uh, and we can just wait for them to time out. Uh, our caster is getting caught, which is a bit of a shame. We've also caught the centigors. And uh, so far, seems like things are going pretty well. Um, this build is working actually surprisingly well. The wolf rats are getting in a lot of damage. And as soon as the chaos spawn disappear, I think uh, we should be good. All right, let's see. So we have the wolf rats uh, gauging onto the Ungor herd. And... Let's see, uh, how's this big middle fight going? Oh, Jesus, another summon. So I think we'll want to pull back from there. 
And then uh, we're going to use our skirmishing forces to just continue shooting these minotaurs. See, we are able to escape uh, that big blob. And, uh, and we have wolf rats now. We'll be able to dive in on the Ungor Raiders. So, uh, let's see. I think uh, another Warp Lightning should be able to deal with the Harpies. And uh, our combined uh, mobility and terror is uh, is really just uh, outpacing the Beastmen here. It seems like they just can't really catch us. And uh, as long as we continue running circles around them, I think should actually be good. So there we go. The Ungor Raiders are gone. Uh, we still have all of our wolf rats alive, uh, which is pretty surprising. And uh, now that they're grouped up with Thwa, uh they should have enough leadership to stay in the fight. Our brood horror comes back. And uh, and after that, uh, it breaks immediately. We also take a huge vile tide on the wolf rats. Uh, we'll have to remember not to group up with them. But... Uh, Let's see, we still have Thwat and the Doom Wheel at almost full HP. So after we run away and regroup, I think we'll be just fine. We're going to try to uh, catch these Butchers of Kalkengard, though. Uh, we don't want them coming back, especially since they do have regen. Um, but I think we should be good. All of the Beastmen infantry is gone except for... Uh, what's it? Well, yeah, all, all the Beastmen infantry is gone. Let's see. Uh, the Saigor is going to be chasing my infantry. But we can just keep away from it. I turned off fire at will so we can save some ammunition. And now it's all about killing off the remaining Minotaurs. The Doom Wheel should be able to get some shots in on them. Then, I think, have a one game. See, uh, some of my clan rats do get caught, uh, but that's not too much of an issue. Uh, they are just clan rats, and uh, and these gutter runners uh, won't really have to worry about getting caught by minotaurs. Uh, one of them does get a little bit close, and uh, he's out of ammunition anyways, so I think we'll just run him in to uh, to take that engagement. While the, uh, while the rest of them shoot, it should be pretty nice. Mogar has no more summons, so he's not much of a threat at all. Uh, and we can just dive our Doom Wheel on top of him without too much of a worry. Let's see, so that's, uh, that's one Minotaur unit chased off. And I think we have this game in the bag. Surprisingly enough. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, there we go. GG. Well, uh, so Skirmish Skaven. Working out against the Beastmen. How well did these wolf rats do? Uh, they about paid for themselves. Which is, uh, pretty nice. Well, yeah, about everything, uh, paid for themselves or about how much money I put in, except for this brood horror. Maybe I'll cut this for something more mobile. Ugh. So for this next game, we are playing as the Skaven up against the Dark Elves. Uh, we've gone for a similar uh, skirmish type style. And we're going to see how well... Uh, we're going to see how well it actually does generally. Uh, so facing off the Dark Elves, they generally have pretty low unit counts, uh, which will play into our favor, especially if they rush. It means that uh, they'll mostly be melee units and they won't have a whole ton to shoot back at these gutter runners. Uh, let's see, our flank here is secured but it means that there's a little bit less space to kite into. So our opponent is ready with a troop count of 1,000, which might be good for us, so let's get into the battle. Uh, let's see, it looks like they've brought a single bolt thrower. 
um, some dark shards, and uh, just some some dark riders with shields. So dark rider shields can pose a bit of a threat. Uh, but we have our wolf rats at the ready, and I suspect that. Uh, if we get a counter charge on them, we will be just fine. Let's bring up our army closer. And our goal is to kill these dark shards. Gotta bring in our skirmishers here. We can also start shooting the hydra too. Oh, let's see. I don't have these guys on skirmish mode. Because we want them to be able to get as close as possible. And I'm seeing a pretty nice opportunity here. To kill these uh, bleak swords. So we'll just charge in there with all of our wolf rats. And uh, you can see they get absolutely murdered. Um, wow, they take a lot of damage. Uh, and then now we can just uh, pull back. Thwot takes a bit of damage himself. But we have our uh, ogre summon. And we're going to be pinning down that hydra. So that we can shoot it to death. In fact, I think these ogres might be better placed uh, killing those dark shards, so we'll bring them there. I do see that uh, there is some cavalry beginning to loop around that we'll have to worry about. Uh, but we have our wolf rats. We're going to charge them into these uh, dark riders. And, uh, and they're doing okay damage. We have our spears in the back to defend against uh, everything else. And I think uh, our gutter runners need to be on skirmish mode. Thwat 2 needs to definitely get to safety. He's taking a ton of damage from Hellebron. In fact, I think he might even want to buff up his own leadership before he up and dies. Uh, let's see. Let's get a charge in there to keep his leadership stable. And he just barely manages to keep it together. So, good job, Thwat. Um, but now, it's, now we got to worry about our backline. There are a bunch of Dark Riders here, uh, but it is only Dark Riders. And uh, as they are just uh, skirmish cavalry, well, we'll be pretty happy taking that fight. Our Rat Ogres too have also done especially well in the back line there. And our mobility force of Wolf Rats and this Doom Wheel uh, were able to actually uh, to chase off the, the Dark Riders there. So uh, now it's just Hellebron and Thwot. Um, we don't want Thwot to be fighting her for too long. I suspect that she'll be able to win that trade. Uh, especially with the Hydras coming in. So we'll disengage with Thwot. And then uh, and then have our Gutter Runners continue to do their damage. Right, so the Dark Riders will continue to get chased off by Wolf Rats. And our group of Wolf Rats here can pretty easily deal with with these dark shards especially if our opponent isn't uh paying attention there so we'll continue pulling back here and now that the sort of split up uh yeah we're we're in a very good position to just run amok in their back line uh, this sort of reminds me of my campaign speed runs too where we use wolf rats to pull uh the ai apart and then uh and then pick them off uh yeah i'm getting very strong vibes there on that front so, uh, let's see, with a little bit of maneuvering, we should be good. See, those dark shards are facing us, and these bleak swords will definitely not be able to hold off against wolf rats. You can see they, uh, they get taken out. Um, and with the doom wheel coming in over here, we should have a terror route on those, uh, on those, uh, what's it, dark shards. So, uh, now that the forces are actually coming back, we'll pull away. And uh, these Dread Spears over here uh, will face a terrible fate surrounded by Skaven. Um, they will most definitely lose the fight. Um, and that fight is decisive enough where we can safely burn off our, uh, our fire at will on our skirmishers. Let's see, uh, we do see we do have some wolf rats uh, getting caught by some black art corsairs, which uh, from campaign I do know they are pretty annoying. Uh, and Hellebron is 
looking to chase off one of my units of wolf rats. Uh, so a little bit of a shame there. But I think we should be just fine. The balance of power likes us too. And I'm seeing... Okay, we almost had a nice pick on some dark shards there. But my opponent pulls their forces together to defend them. Um, but just taking a stock at their ar taking stock of their army, they only have one range unit. The other one is a bolt thrower that is too far away from the artillery. Uh, we have Hellebron at very low HP, and we have Thwat. Uh, what's it? Who's just constantly regenerating? Um, so we only get more and more ahead at this point. I am thinking, uh, we can probably make... Oh, actually, he has two range units. Another unit of Dark Shards over there. We'll sacrifice some Wolf Rats just to stall them out. And then hopefully the Doom Wheel will be able to kill Hellebron. Rot can get in there too. And I want to start shooting that War Hydra. Our rats are going to do some maneuvering, or some maneuvers. To get into the back line. And I think uh, there we go. So we get into the back line. And uh, now we are closing in on Hellebron. We've popped all of our buffs. We'll give anti large. And uh, these rats should do quite a bit of damage here. Uh, yep, Thwat 2 actually gets a very big hit on Hellebron. And that's a decisive victory for us. GG. Okay, so, uh, let's take a quick look at this. Wolf Rats, uh, paid for themselves again. Uh, Warlock Engineer was just there to buff them up. Thwat lived, and our Skirmishers did very nice damage. Uh, so this build is seeing, uh, our mobile forces, uh, specifically the Wolf Rats and our Skirmishers paying for themselves Quite well. Uh, let's see here. So, board, and we can get into the game. So, uh, for our viewer viewer request, we've brought Tretch, and uh, we're up against Bretonia. Um, we have a whole bunch of Skaven weapon teams, a whole bunch of guns to slow them down, and uh, and some sneaky sneaky Eshin triads, who will be. Uh, are going to stop the charges that come in from Bretonian Knights uh, after they are finally done being uh, battered and bruised by our uh, impeccable front line here. Um, we'll finally finish them off with Wolf Rats and then hopefully we win the day. Uh, obviously this is pretty risky. We have a front line of three units. All of them are pretty squishy. And a back line of uh, just a bunch of really weak troops. <laughs> um, so don't try this build. But I didn't have a lot of time left. So we're just going to try it out. So uh, going into the game, our opponent has actually gone for trebuchets. And uh, some knights of the realm. So fairly heavy uh, infantry style Bretonia build. Uh, I mean, I think we can actually move back and try to flank around with our uh, wolf rats in this case. Um, as soon as we're done bearing with this lag. So it looks like we're having a little bit of a laggy opponent today. Maybe our internet's dying. We'll have to see. But let's see how well this does. So wolf rats are going to transition along the left hand side. And uh, we want to minimize damage from trebuchets, so let's split uh, and make our troops as wide as possible. And uh, this peasant mob front line will likely be uh, not too much of a problem. We're going to advance with our poison wind mortars. They have a whole ton of armor, so they're not really worried about these archers. And, uh, and yeah, they can just uh, start throwing in their globes. They should do just fine. Uh, these peasant mobs will hopefully be routing off at the sight of them. Uh, but they might need a little bit of encouragement from the warp fire throwers. The peasant mobs in the middle are going to be taking 
a lot of uh oops shots over there and uh and i'm seeing a nice opportunity for us to catch some knights over here so they charge in they take a lot of damage from the warp fire throwers um and they should be they should be gone actually they they route uh which is good for us okay nice uh so that actually gives us a gap in the bretonian lines which means that uh we can just push through with our rats and uh and munch on some peasant bowmen here let's see we can also get a summon and as soon as the knights get close we will be moving uh, back with the wolf rats to the safety of our front lines. So nice, our right flank is secured. And now we just have to worry about all these knights over here. Uh, let's see, Tretch. Uh, I guess... I'm not sure what Tretch can do here. But we have a lot of knights. Uh, they actually took a lot of damage. I'm not sure from exactly what. But uh, I'm happy that the damage was done. And, uh, and as the knights collapse, we're just going to focus on gunning them down as much as possible. Uh, let's see. Do we actually have any buffs here for our wolf rats? Uh, we don't. But it doesn't matter because this continu continuous gunfire should actually be able to, uh, to kill the knights here. Um, and all we gotta do at this point... Is, uh, is just re-secure our guns, which our uh, triads seem to be doing very well. Um, there is the Fey Enchantress that we'll have to worry about, but I think Tretch might be able to kill her. I'm not sure. Let's uh, let's send them out into a duel to see how that goes. Um, she's just continuing to chase these Poison Wind Mortars, but that's not too much of a problem. All right, so we've survived the big push from our opponent, and uh, and he calls GG there. So nice. Um, yeah, the warp fire throwers they do a lot of damage to cavalry. Um, although in this case they didn't actually get too much value. Uh, most of it actually came from where did our value come from? <laughs> ah, yes, here we go. A thousand damage on the poison. Lobadiers, and I think our triads did well too? No, they didn't. Okay, so I'm not sure exactly where our value came from, but at the very least, the wolf rats did okay, and our rattling guns did especially well. So, uh, GG. Nice, a surprising win, but yeah, with only four units of cavalry, uh, we had enough guns to deal with them. Alright, so for this next game, we are going up against the Greenskins. Can be sometimes a, a little bit of a tough matchup. But uh, we might be able to catch some off guard with this fun skirmish build. So we've fought uh, six skirmishers. Two of them with poison. Uh, these are just gutter runners and night runners. And uh, our tools to defend them against the mobile units of the Greenskins are our dog units. So we've bought four wolf rats of varying types. So that's two AP and two poison. And they can counter charge anything that charges my gutter runners. Uh, let's see, let's deploy over here. Uh, to get the, uh, to pressure the greenskins, we've bought these poison wind mortars. And we're hoping that our skirmish power will be able to keep these guys safe. Uh, we will be trying to kite with them as best as we can. And hopefully they don't get caught out and die. Um, I haven't actually tried these guys yet in a sort of mobile build. So let's see how it goes. <sighs> Say good luck, have fun to our opponent. And it looks like he's brought a pretty sizable army at about 1400. Uh, in case this is a Night Goblin Rush, we will deploy a little bit further back. And we're also going to uh, surround our mortars with these Gaven Slave Spears. I think they should be able to defend it. Uh, at least with the help of our Wolf Rats. So our opponent is ready. Uh, so let's see what they have in store for us. Uh, let's see, I see some stone trolls. 
see some infantry and luckily for us there doesn't appear to be any uh artillery so they will have to be advancing uh let's see it looks like uh who a uh vindictive glare actually goes down on my night runners and it kills uh six models so not too shabby from my opponent there although i'm uh i'm okay with the night runners uh getting picked away at we have quite a few of them and uh at six winds of magic you're killing one model per per winds of magic so i think that's worth it cool so uh as we buy ourselves the center of the map uh that actually does put us in a pretty good position even though we did have to advance it buys us more time to kite back with our forces if need be and now our mortars are engaging uh they will be able to fire on these archers and uh and we even get to hit the stone trolls too that will uh that's a little bit less important though since these stone trolls do have regeneration um but i am happy that uh that we do get to hit all that infantry there is a little bit more uh there are some more grouped up units over here though um that i do want to be hitting with the mortars so i think we're going to start shooting in there as soon as we route off the archers oh man my uh my doom wheel has actually taken a bit of damage and the stone trolls are finally beginning to exit the forest they engage in on my lord and we're going to try out this Death Frenzy strategy. We buff them up with Death Frenzy. We proc Creature Killer. And then uh, we charge into the Stone Trolls. And you can see here the Wolf Rats. Uh, absolutely murder them. <laughs> we bring down the Stone Trolls to half HP almost instantly. We uh, get some Goblins to route off. But it looks like their routing may have actually saved them. The Death Frenzy is still going. So I think we can actually route off these guys next. And as the greenskin forces push towards us, uh, we can just start running back. There we go. So we actually shatter a unit of stone trolls over there. Uh, some big fanatics come down though, which hurt my wolf rats a bit. From the paunch too, uh, can also be a bit of a problem. But uh, he may get caught out here. And you can see that uh, one of the advantages here um, of being uh what's it of pressuring our opponent like this uh they might get overly hasty with their troops and then uh and then we can just catch them out as uh as they try to shut down our gutter runners there we go grom the paunch is taking quite a bit of damage now uh presumably he's used a lot of his buffs which uh will make him a lot harder to kill um, our Doom Wheel is also getting engaged on. And our Wolf Rats are wavering, but they make it. They, uh, they catch off some of those, uh, what's it, what are these guys called? Nasty Skulkers. Um, and our kite game is looking pretty good. Uh, it is too bad that Gra manages to escape. But not at the cost of some of his troops. Uh, let's see, there are some Black Orcs moving up now. And uh, I feel like we really just need to regroup at this point. So let's reestablish our line and figure out what we want to do here exactly. See, these Skaven slaves can uh, stall for time. They'll just sacrifice their lives with greater good. And, uh, and I think these gutter runners, now that they're out of ammunition, they can probably head back and begin pressuring those archers. Rot can hunt Grom, no problem. And our Doom Wheel, I suspect, will do very well against the Black Orcs. So some cycle charging there. Should be good. Our Wolf Rats. We're going to continue pushing uh, along the side here. And I think we can get them to kill some nasty Skulkers for us. So we'll throw down a big buff on top of them. Uh, save. Throt. And, uh, and we can see how well these Wolf Rats do. There we go, they kill off the nasty skulkers. They'll be able to chase off 
the uh, goblins too, but we have lost our doom wheel. Uh, which is a bit bad. Um, and yeah, it looks like the doom wheel is going down. So one of our major, uh, one of our more important resources is going to be taken out. Uh, we won't have that for killing single entities, but we still have thought at the very least. Poison wind mortars too are still alive. And I think they can start shooting into those black orcs. No problem. Let's see, what are these guys? Just some orc boys. Uh, so, let's see. The orc boys can get kited. Um, it's sort of a shame that we have to waste ammo on them, but I don't think we'll be running out of ammo this game. Uh, so we're going to be a little bit more uh, aggressive in the usage there. Uh, our poison wind mortars are now safe. And, uh, and let's see, we still have three rat units. Oh, okay, there we go. So the, the orc boys are gone. Um, so, oh man, I'm not used to this kite style. So I'm not exactly sure what I need to be doing at any given moment. Uh, but we are able to pick off some of the green skin forces. We'll chase off the orc boys with fire at will off. To make sure that we save ammunition and we'll use our poison wind mortars to continue shooting at the black orcs. Thwot really wants to be hunting down Grom so he'll be going there and uh and I think we'll be able to kill off those black orcs too. So uh it's all about efficiency we need to make sure that we're chasing off these troops. Um and we're pretty well set up for it. We actually shatter the, the stone trolls. Is good. Um, and at this point we're running out of ammunition. But there aren't too many green skin forces left. Uh, the black orcs. Uh, would pose a problem. But we have the poison wind mortars to chip away at them. And as soon as Grom dies. I think we should be good. But. He is proving to be extremely tanky. Um, Thwat's been chasing him all game. Uh, but he's just been a very hard target to pin down. Although I think we might have finally gotten him. As uh, he does begin routing. Uh, it means that we will be able to get Thwat to chase him off the battlefield. Long as he doesn't get too stuck up. See, it looks like... Uh, Grom might actually come back. But he's at such low HP that's not really a problem. The balance of power suit is wildly in our favor. And as soon as we get some mortar shots in on those archers, I think this game will be as good as done. Of course, there's this uh, goblin big boss here. But he, uh, he can't do much versus a full HP thwat. That's army losses for the greenskins and GG. Okay, so that game was a little bit sketchy, uh, but we did get a lot of good picks and a lot of good value uh, just about everywhere. So if you look at our Poison Wind Mortars, they of course got a whole ton of value. Our Wolf Rats paid for themselves and then some. Skirmishers used up all their ammunition, and when they do so, you can see uh, they'll pay for themselves if they, they use up all the ammo. I think all in all, it went pretty good except for my Doom Wheel, uh, which I missed my code there. Uh, but yeah, you know, uh, yeah, we missed my code the Doom Wheel a bit, but it didn't really matter that much. Look at that, silver chevrons on the Poison Wind Mortars. Yes. So this next game is up against the Wood Elves, and we bought uh, a build that's sort of focusing on trying to kill a Cavalry Rush. We've brought two assassins to deal with the Ryan. Uh, and these guys are going to want to stay healthy. Because other than them and these Gisales, there's not a whole ton of good stuff for Orion. Of course, we have the Council Guard and Ixia's Triads. But these guys are going to be stuck on cavalry most of the game. Uh, Rat Ogres 2 are okay versus Orion, but they're not the best. So lots of things that we'll have to be careful of. For our opponent... He's bought a uh, pretty heavy infantry-focused army. 
which is a very good sign for us. So we have Poison Wind Mortars and Gisales, which will outrange the Wood Elf Infantry. We also have a bunch of Wolf Rats. They'll stop the infantry from advancing. All we gotta do is stay aggressive with them. Alright. So, uh, it's just a slow advance towards our opponent here. He has no real pressure on us, so as soon as we get in range, we can just start uh, firing away. Like some Glade Riders have moved out of the forest. Uh, looking to be only one unit. So we'll be able to secure that front. And by splitting up the wolf rats, it means that they will be able to pressure a larger area. But things are things are looking like uh, it could be a little bit rough for this guy. Sadly enough. Ooh, would you look at that? So he does uh, dodge my poison wind mortars a bit. But even then, he still gets hit by them. Uh, which is a bit of a shame, I must say. Uh, even with his, even with that dodging, is not enough to defend against the mortars. So uh, yeah, we'll just start shooting these Azrai spears. Uh, an arrow of Kurnos comes down on my bell, but it misses pretty terribly. And we'll just be sitting here, uh, waiting out the siege. So in uh, situations like this, uh, where you're getting outgunned, you always want to be advancing. Um, and when you're not getting, uh, and when you have the, the gun advantage, you can just sit back and relax. Uh, of course this will change depending on how the battlefield changes. Um, but in this case, it's a pretty easy and clear-cut situation. So, uh, looks like there are some, uh, maybe some swift shiver shards over there on the flank that we'll have to worry about. Uh, indeed there are some deep wood swift shiver shards. Cool. Uh, so our rat ogres, we'll have to worry about them a tiny bit. Um, but we have some, uh, we have some clan rats moving in to intercept and our Ixha's triads too will be able to do good there. Uh, we accidentally actually lose some of our dog units. They get caught up in the middle there against Glade Guard uh, and they don't trade effectively. So I think uh, that was bit of a misplay there. Um, instead, it would have been better if they just hovered behind them to keep up the pressure. But uh, even with that, uh, that, that was more of a minor mistake and I think we're still doing just fine. Now we're going to cast the Dreaded 13th here to see if our opponent is ready to react in time and it looks like it's a no. So you get a huge summon of council, uh, not council guard. Storm Vermin Halberds over there. Our rats actually come back and are able to catch the Deepwood Scouts. Um, but our opponent does manage to get in our back line. I have a very bad habit for getting to check behind me in these battles. So that works out for them. Uh, and let's see. Uh, well, we're going to want to hope that these mortars manage to stick around so that they can keep firing. Let's see, I also really need to figure out where my rats are. So I have some here munching on some Glade Guard and some there by the Deepwood Scouts. So these ones can route off the Eternal Guard and my infantry can begin pushing through to start bothering these uh, these Glade Guard units. There aren't a whole ton of Wood Elf units left. So uh, they should do pretty well. Pendulum comes down on my Storm Vermin, but it is just a summon. So, uh, I think that is going to be a little bit unfortunate for my opponent. As, uh, as the summon will be deteriorating. And it means that the pendulum didn't really get its full value. Some full HP cavalry is coming in now. Um, and, oh, it looks like uh, that's actually Drycha. So, we'll hunt her down with our assassins. And, uh, and... Just gotta pull back these poison wind mortars against the dryads. All right, so here we go. Drycha is getting hunted down. Our poison wind mortars are doing okay. We can actually catch up the cavalry right before they reach our Gisales. Uh Unfortunate for them. Uh, we also have a nice opportunity for Scorch. I think we're doing okay. Um, man, I'm having a really hard time actually casting these Skaven. 
battles though since it's feeling like there's just so much going on with their with their uh with their roster um it's like i'm constantly doing a whole bunch of different things at the same time uh but i think if you can sort of just manage all the different units uh okay then i think it generally goes well like you just have to defend your back line pressure the front line i'm not sure i'm not sure sort of what the core uh core rules of skaven are but uh anyways back to the game you have an interesting situation where uh we actually lost our two assassins to Drycha. i'm not sure if that's because of the combat prowess of Drycha, or if it's because uh what's it Ooh, big hit there uh, i don't know if it's because Drycha is a good fighter or if my assassins were just getting shot to death but that was a little bit unexpected. I'm not sure how that happened. Um, but they do recover. They are able to shut down some Glade Guard. And they can move back to their assassination target. So in this case, uh, let's see. I don't think there's much left for our opponent to kill our Lord. We have many summons. The front line is buckling. And uh, he's on the verge of army losses. Our wolf rats, too, are still alive, and they will be able to chase off any of these units that are running off. And let's see if these assassins can actually deal with Drycha now. Uh, you can see her combat stats are brought down to 9 and 16, so you would expect her to begin going down. She does have a nice charge bonus, which could be a problem. But, uh, but after that wears off, uh, should be going down, and there we go. It's brought down to almost no HP. And that is GG. Ah, all right. Nice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think going for a sort of standard Wood Elf build may not be the best idea against Skaven. Uh, sort of a kite style would have done pretty well there for a full on rush. But, uh, it's, it's not the worst in general. It's just that poison wind mortars are so good. Look at that, 1,700 damage. Yeah, Poison Wind Mortars. And they did very little friendly fire too. I think I heard there might have been a bug where the damage value calculates friendly fire. Not sure if it's been fixed yet. But nevertheless, that's a lot of damage. Uh, as for everything else, I'm not sure. Oh, yes, it was my dogs, yes. Yeah, 600 damage, 800 and 1,200 respectively. So, getting underway, my UI feels really small off the get-go, but we'll see if we get used to it. Uh, we are up against Empire, and we have a, uh, we're once again trying to go for a heavy weapons team style. Uh, and we're going to see if we're able to hold out against a bunch of cavalry. Now, one thing that Wolfrats does for us here is that they buy us a lot of space. If any, uh, if the cavalry decides to split up completely, the wolf rats will be able to, uh, to hunt them down and pick them off individually, which would be very bad for the empire. If they decide to go for a, uh, if they decide to concentrate in one spot, it means that we'll be able to focus fire with these rattling guns, and they will also have a very hard time. So that's the theory of it. Um, this build is also very strong versus uh, large amounts of infantry. So I'm not worried there. And just to make sure that we have a little bit of terror to bounce around, we have Thrott. Of course, a Plague Priest helps too because he can spawn summons in the center. And it lets us leave more Skaven slaves along the flanks. Now, a lot of people like to deploy in the forest here. So I think I'll shift a little bit left and leave an extra unit of Skaven Slaves to defend against that. So with that out of the way, we can get onto our opponent's build, numbering at one at 1,200 units. He has brought some War Wagons, which won't really help out too much here. And a relatively large infantry force, supported by some Knights of the Blazing Sun. Ooh, a Luminarch of Hish, too is a little bit scary 
Um, and I think we will want to pull away from that. The war wagons are getting some damage on uh, on my mortars. Uh, but keeping an eye on it, it seems like it's not too much damage. We also managed to, uh, to block up the knights. And we get a glorious volley into them. Uh, bringing them down to half HP basically right away. The Luminarch, though, gets hit on my caster. And uh, and gets quite a bit of value. A second shot goes down, uh, bringing my caster to almost nothing. And I think we're going to have to start worrying about getting that caster. Uh, what's it? We need to worry about keeping the caster from dying to the Luminarch. Now, uh, our guns can hold down the front line. Uh, let's see, this general of the empire is being a bit annoying. Uh, so we need to make sure we stop him. Um, and we're just going to send our wolf rats in to deal with the Luminarch. It's not the ROR, so it doesn't have a net. And our rattling guns... Oh my gosh, they're, they are really able to kill that general of the Empire, Thwat. Able to chase off the war wagons. We don't want him to spend more time on those than he needs to, though. Since they're not really a major threat. And we're instead going to send him in on to the Luminarch. Our wolf rats are going to split up to start chasing off those units. And we're just going to continue pounding down this infantry front line. There we go. Uh, we have that left side secured. Our wolf rats can deal with the war wagons. And now uh, we can get our wolf rats to start killing these huntsmen. The knights have been dealt with over here. And uh, we also managed to route off some knights on the right flank. So uh, the empire here, just really having not enough knights to deal with us, collapses quickly. And we secure a win. GG. Wow. Uh, wow. What a build. So that was really fun. Uh, I'm not sure if it relies. Of course, uh, he didn't have an optimized build here. And I'm now I'm wondering what would have happened if he had more cavalry. Uh, if he had cut these two and taken three more cavalry units. The question is if we would have been in trouble. And I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, but that's what these tests are for. So let's take a look at our units. Our rattling guns are paying for themselves amazingly well. Look at that damage. Warp fire throwers also paid for themselves. And the poison wind globideers too. Our rats are working out well too. And the skaven slaves. They don't pay for themselves. But they hold the line. Which is all we really need them to do. Nice. Uh, we did misplay here. That is pretty fine. So, going up into this next game, we once again face off against the Beastmen. Our Skaven forces, and we're going to try kiting them. Now, uh, usually, I don't think this would have worked before, because your gutter runners and night runners would be able to get chased down by the Beastmen forces. But now, we have wolf rats at our disposal. And with their mobility, it means that uh, basically any beastmen mobile forces will be able to get uh, chased down by these guys. A lot of beastmen units do not have armor. It means that these guys, with their low AP and high base weapon damage, will be able to tear them apart. They have a charge bonus of 28, which brings them... To almost uh, to above 50 damage with a uh, with 50 with higher than 50 melee attack. They poison their opponents too. They're just really great in general. You just have to make sure that they don't take too much damage themselves. So I'm sort of liking the style. Uh, a lot of beastmen expect a defensive Skaven play, and something unexpected like this could start working out. So good luck, have fun to our opponent. Uh, I think we probably have given them enough time now. So let's just set that countdown at one minute and see how it goes. Uh, Zadag asking, did I finish my speed run? I did not. I'm going to be trying it out uh, 
maybe this weekend. Uh, not today, since I have some other plans today. But, uh... But yeah, yeah, we're still working on the speed run, sadly enough. It's a hard one. It's very hard. Okay, nice. So, uh, what's this? We got some doggos coming on in. We can run uh, our Skaven slaves into them. And then uh, counter charge with wolf rats. There we go. Let's see, these centigors are going to get cut apart too. Um, they charge into my skirmishers, take a whole ton of, of uh, gunfire. And they'll be out of the fight in just a second. Ooh, there are some harpies in the back, however, that we'll have to worry about. Uh, and let's see. We've got to chase those guys off, and uh, we just have to continue pulling away. Those centigors uh, will be dealt with, no problem. And uh, it's just a bunch of infantry over here that we'll be able to run away from. We can even cycle charge with our uh, doom wheel. Um, to slow them down, and I think that'll put us in a good place. The bot needs to get in there, though. Uh, we did have to sacrifice some Skaven slaves for the greater good. Um, and Harpies are engaging on my Night Runners, but that will be a mistake. You'll see in just a second. They get munched on by Wolf Rats pretty quickly. Now, uh, let's see. A mistake from my end, though. I let my Doom Wheel get caught again. So let's pull that out. Continue running away with our night runners, and uh, we'll use our dogs to kill those Ungor Spearmen herd. They should get terror routed in just a second. And uh, and as long as we don't get trapped up too much, I think we'll be good. But I'm painting myself into a corner. Uh, let's see. So we got to be careful. Let's continue pushing through. Uh, and then hopefully our guys don't get caught up. Uh, we also want to be spamming out these summons. And uh, and we want these Black Horn guys out of the picture. They've been sitting behind my lines for a while now. It's a bit of a problem. Some Centigors are moving in too. Uh, but we can kite away from them. Uh, and as long as we don't get caught up by those Minotaurs, uh, our back line should be just fine. So the Centigors move in on my Gutter Runners. Uh, but we can continue running away from them. And with the support of the wolf rats, I think we'll be just about good. Let's see, how's my caster going? It looks like my summoner is down, which uh, is unfortunate. Um, but we still have, uh... oh, actually, no, uh, my... Let's see, my warlock engineer is down. That's actually a little bit worse, especially because there's a manticore summon coming in hot. Uh, let's see, so we're just going to run away from it. Stall for time. And uh, and continue to throw down summons. I've done a pretty bad job in that I keep letting my casters get caught. Um, but we're pulling apart the Beastmen backline. Uh, let's see, the Manticore summon. As long as it doesn't hit my Doom Wheel. Uh, I think we're safe on that front. And uh, we will be able to get a pretty nice charge in over here. Onto uh, some beastmen units. Nice. So the Manticore is distracted. We're going to try killing uh, this Gorble. And uh, and we're going to pull Throt away from this huge blob over here. It is a nice place to summon some Rat Ogres though. Since they will uh, maximize their damage over there. And we can even throw down some Warp Lightning. Uh, let's see. So... We're expecting to get some pretty good damage there. The Gorble is uh is hitting my my do my doom wheel pretty hard. We don't appreciate that. Um, but nice, we get uh we get another good charge against some Ungor herd. There we go. They even get terrified because of Thought. And I think we're settling into a pretty good position now. We still have all of our wolf rats. Uh, these chaos spawn will be disintegrating in just a second. And uh, if we can kill this Gorble, it means that our single entities will be a great threat. So Thwat's going to charge in on top of him. We're not too worried if we take a bit of damage on Thwat, since we do have that healing. And uh, and the rest of the infantry will die to wolf rats uh, pretty easily enough. So let's get them in over there. We'll uh, 
give them some frenzy to increase their uh, their melee attack. And there we go. They uh, already route those guys off. Let's see. This blob fight is getting a little bit nasty. So we're going to back up away from there. Uh, and that'll give us an opportunity to cycle charge with our big monster guys. Let's see. In fact, uh, I think our death frenzied dogs can probably do well against these minotaurs since they're about to rout. And uh, you can see there... They, uh, they get them to rout, uh, and that's not army losses, that's just because of the terror from our mobile monsters. So there we go. Uh, we chase off the minotaurs, and uh, and with that strength of the beastmen broken, we get them to hit army losses, and GG. Oh man, nice. Uh, yeah, so... So yeah, that worked out pr uh, pretty well. Um, there were some scary moments, but these harpies had a very hard time landing on my night runners and gutter runners. In fact, I don't even think harpies would do good here. Uh, the manticore summons could have been scary. They almost killed my doom wheel. Uh, so I think we lucked out a bit there. Uh, but yeah, yeah, dogs and skirmishers getting their value. Uh, that's basically all we needed. Uh, a little bit of terror after that, and the Beastmen were not a problem. I think I should really start trying this out, actually, against uh, against some higher tier players. I might contact my clanmates. We can try it with this matchup, because this is feeling pretty good. This feels like a nice build. So, for this match, playing against the Dark Elves. And we have a nice little army for uh, set up now. We're going for the classic guns and dogs style. Uh, basically, a whole ton of firepower, literally, and a bunch of dogs to make sure that uh, you don't get run over by the enemy's mobility. So, uh, there we go. This is a very wide build. And, uh, and we can afford to go wide because we have these dogs. It's amazing. Uh, to make sure the front line doesn't buckle so quickly, we have our Plague Priest. And, of course, we have our Lord Thrott to spread terror around uh, to help wherever he's needed. So, uh, yep, there we go. I think we've set up correctly, so let's get underway. Uh, these guys want to be on guard mode. We want these guys on the front line hotkey. For our opponent, we've brought many harpies. Uh, some dark riders and it looks like they want to set up for some manticore uh manticore action so we got to be careful against those uh but uh that's they're not too much of a problem really um well actually actually no manticores are a bit of a problem uh wolf rats can do some good damage to them so uh we're gonna have to see how that goes the battle begins with some poison globes getting thrown in on top of Corsairs. Gets a decent amount of damage off from the get-go. And uh, and some Dark Riders here should be getting uh, killed by Warp Fire Throwers in just a second. Our Rattling Guns can fire in on top of them. And already we're seeing the infantry line of the Dark Elves uh, taking quite a bit of a beating. Our Warp Fire Throwers are able to uh to shoot without too much worry uh but now for the actual scary part the uh the harpies and the manticores are coming in hot so uh it looks like they are diving in towards uh this warp fire crew by the looks of it um but we have guns pointed and ready to fire if they land, they're going to get munched on by uh, a million wolf rats and Thwop. So, uh, it could be rough for them. You can see the first group of harpies lands over there. Which, uh, would be worrying before, but you can see the wolf rats deal a lot of damage to them. The harpies are already gone. And uh, now we move on to support this gun team. We turn our center gun team, who has also been relieved, to, uh, to move in and support. And as long as we don't get blocked up by the cavalry, we should be fine. So Thwot comes in. He routes off the harpies immediately. 
And uh, we should be able to kill off Crone Hellebron here. He may be a decent fighter, but not good enough in this situation. Uh, just fully surrounded by Thwat and Wolf Rats. Uh, she might not even be able to escape. And there we go, we can just have the Wolf Rats follow her around. And they'll do just fine. See a Manticore in the back line is now moving in. And uh, some troops are getting a little bit close to my front line. But uh, that's not too much of a problem. We still have many of our guns operational. Uh, and these troops are battered enough where the Poison uh, poison Wind Globadiers will be able to deal with them. So there we go. Hellebron is down, I do believe. Uh, and many of our guns are still operational. See, that Manticore should be getting killed in just about a second. Is it a summon? It's not. So definitely worth getting a pick there. And uh, we get our opponent to leave. So GG. Jeez. This build is amazing. Uh, I really want to test this out versus my clan mates now. So I think that will be the last game for us today. Uh, we'll take a quick look at the wolf rats. They always do well. Look at those numbers. This is great. Oh my gosh. Amazing. So, uh, thank you very much everyone for tuning in. You can follow, subscribe, and so on if you want to. And that out of the way, uh, goodbye to YouTube. And we'll be closing out the stream in just a second.